Hi, good morning, and welcome to Lester Elam's YouTube channel. It's great to be with you and spend some time with you. You can also have a look at us on our Facebook site, Lester Elam Facebook, or Lester Elam website. It'd be great uh, just to uh, touch base with you. But thank you for tuning in today. Um, we've been looking at the parables of Jesus Christ over the last few weeks and what Jesus has to say to us through the word of God through the parables and today we're going to look at another parable of Jesus and we're going to um, look at what he's got to say you know so often Jesus didn't mince his words did he? he 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 wasn't too worried if he offended people to be honest and and sometimes we we choose our words because we don't want to upset people but here we have another parable with the Pharisees. Now, now the Pharisees, they weren't bad people. In fact, in many ways, they were good. But the problem was that they put their trust in their own self-righteousness, in their own uh, position, and, and their own sense of um, self-worth. <laughs> and so Jesus tells a, a parable here about prayer. And about two people that come for prayer. One's a Pharisee and the other is a tax collector who is seen in the day to be somebody who was almost the, the worst sinner. You know, the tax collector was set up by the Roman Empire uh, to collect tax for the Roman Empire. But not only did the, the taxman often just collect tax for the Roman Empire, but he put a little bit extra on. For himself and so the, they overtaxed the people and the people just didn't like tax collectors and so Jesus here is taking the two extremes if you like have you ever seen Raiders of the Lost Ark and when he's when he's going uh, through all the different trials there's one where it says something like this and the penitent pen, penitent man shall humble himself before God and he looks round and he wonders what the clue is and then he suddenly thinks oh, I need to humble myself I need to be on my knees and just as he gets to his knees these blades come out from the wall side that would have chopped him in two you see he needed to humble himself before God but here we have this parable and I'm going to read the parable to you it's from the Gospel of Luke, and it's chapter 18, verse 9. And he also told this parable to some people who trusted in themselves. That they were righteous and viewed others with contempt. Two men went up into the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood and was praying this to himself, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, swindlers, unjust, adulterers, or even like the tax collector. I fast twice a week. I pay tithes on all that I get. But the tax collector standing some distance away was even unwilling to lift up his eyes to heaven, but was beating his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, the sinner. I tell you, this man went to his house justified rather than the other, for everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but he who humbles himself will be exalted. So here we have this scene in the temple courts. And quite often people would go there to pray and there, there would be corporate prayer, but there would be individuals there praying to God. And, and here we have the Pharisee and he, he's full of himself. Look at me and what have I? Look, look Lord, I, I do this. I pay my tithes on everything. I fast twice a week. The law only required them to fast once a year. And so it was this this sense of self-worth, this sense of self-righteousness this sense of 
Um, look at me. Look what I do, Lord. I'm worthy of coming into your presence. I am, I am full of myself. <laughs> and um, and there he was, and, and he was saying, I pay, I pay tithes on everything. You see, the law only required them to pay the tithes on, on the crops. But because the Pharisees wanted to be right, they paid the tithes on, on the herbs that they produced. They tithes on every little, little minuscule thing. Um, and it was all about self-righteousness. And then we come to the tax collector. The tax collector didn't even lift up his eyes towards heaven. He felt ashamed, I guess. He felt undone in God's presence. But he knew that if he came to God seeking mercy, that he would find it. He, he knew that if he came to God asking for forgiveness, that God would forgive him. And so there he was, beating his chest. And, and I guess people were looking around and thinking, look at him, what has he done? Oh, he's a tax collector. He should beat his chest. He should be <laughs> humbling himself before God. He needs, he needs uh, God. And, and, and so they, they looked around and saw this man. And there he was. It was interesting. He doesn't call himself, he doesn't say to God, be merciful to me, a sinner. In fact, he didn't even compare himself with anybody else. He said, God, be merciful to me, the sinner. All he could see was not other people's position, whether they were good, bad, or whatever. The only thing he could see was his own position before God. He was the sinner. There in the midst of all these people, cried out to God, God, be merciful to me, the sinner. You know, that word merciful there means let thy anger be removed. He knew that he was separated from God. His sin had separated him from God and he came and sought mercy from God. You see, so often when we come into God's presence, we are undone, aren't we? <laughs> His holiness reveals our sin, I guess bit like Isaiah when when Isaiah came into the presence of God he said whoa for I am undone <laughs> suddenly he, all of who Isaiah was was revealed before the living God you know we need to humble ourselves before God the word of God says that we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God and we only are able to come into God's presence not because of anything that we have done like the uh, Pharisee believed. But we're only ever to come into God's presence because of everything that he has done. He's clothed us in a robe of righteousness. He's given us a ring of authority upon our finger, hasn't he? He's put sandals upon our feet. He's, he's, uh, when we came to the Lord, there was a party in heaven, a bit like the prodigal son. You know, who is a God like our God? When we come before him and, and we come before the awesome God, the almighty God of the universe. Yeah, well, we, need, we humble ourselves because what a privilege it is to come into his presence. You know, if we were to come into the presence of our queen here in England, we would, we would humble ourselves. We would bow with respect to the Queen. Why? Because we're in the presence of royalty. Well, when we come into the presence of Almighty God, the King, the Lord of Lords, <laughs> the Majesty on high, yeah, our, our response is, is to humble ourselves before Him. You know, when Jesus gets to the end of this and, 
and a bit like those blades that, that would have cut um, him, him in two in the Raiders of Lost, Lost Ark. Jesus said, I tell you, this man went to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but he who humbles himself will be exalted. And I guess those around him listening, the Pharisees of the day, would have thought, there we are again. There we are again. Because Jesus had come to save sinners. And we need to recognise who we are. Um, we were sinners. We are now saints. But we still humble ourselves before our living God, don't we? You know, God loves us. And God loves you. And if you're listening and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Saviour, then he's reaching out towards you today to accept him. He wants to forgive you of your sins. All we have to do is come to him a bit like this man here and humble ourselves before him and cry out to him and say, Lord, I am the sinner. Forgive me. Lord, I repent of my sins and find mercy at the throne of grace. Have a great day, guys. God is with you. God is for you. God has gone before you into this day. Be blessed. See you soon.